we, I, I think half of the struggle, if not more than half of the struggle, is getting out of our own way. Um, and I think especially now with the stakes getting higher and higher, it's like we really have to get out of our own way. And I think particularly when it comes to talking about despair, um, which is a very natural and normal and probably a healthy response to what's happening, um, we have a lot of barriers in our way. And I think you mentioning ritual and other things like this is a way to kind of acknowledge those barriers and maybe work through them a bit. Um, but I'm curious because I know that you've done this transition work a lot, uh, particularly with women, and you do ritual, you do certain things with them to help them through these transitionary periods. What is a common thing that you always see and experience when people really begin to transition, when they really begin to be like, okay, this is how I can find a path forward here? What is a common thing you see in all, in all of those experiences? Well, uh, the thing that comes to mind immediately to me is that this, um, you know, after the intensity of ending, a, a big ending or multiple converging endings, there is like this giant void where, where the uncertain, the personal uncertainty is just like, you, it's like, you don't know what to do. Um, there, there is no sense of the direction forward. And I, I call that the dwelling place of the in-between because life is asking us to dwell there, not speed through it, solve this, get ourselves back into our positive attitudes or engage in the next best survival technique so we don't feel so bad and we're not so afraid, but to to dwell there long enough um, until something starts coming through. One of the biggest things that can help in this period is, um, is definitely your friends that believe that there's, there is some guidance and there is a, a path through, but you, you have to wait for it. There's a, some patience here. And what, can, what you can do is be curious about it, but don't go into the, um, your old mode of uh, filling up the void so you just don't feel empty. It's okay to feel empty right now. And... A, a real transition process, and I think that's what people want more than anything, is not to run this next phase according to somebody else's good advice, um, to traditional formulas for success and um, normalcy. There is no more normal. So, what what can we wait for? What can we tune to? What can, you know? I know a lot of people will say, "God damn it! This time I want the real thing. I am not going to do relationship on the same basis that I've done it for fifty years. This is fucking over. I can't do this anymore." Um, and then you got to wait. But the um. And you've got friends that, um, that will wait with you, that trust the waiting. Um, and then life starts to come in. I know this sounds kind of woo-woo, especially to people who are in the midst of all of this stuff. But this is where the, um, the unseen support and the, and, the, and the guidance that comes from within. It's not like some voice that, you know, Oh, off of a mountain where, you know, you go up there with your tablets and you get it all, you know, uh, <laughs> and then you come down the mountain and you have it all prescribed. But there, there is a sense of, hmm, I feel urged to do this. And it might be, hmm, I think I need to 
learn to play the harmonica. Um, there needs to, uh, I think I need to, hmm, I think I need to cut out sugar because I am so wired all the time that I can't hit this space. And I'm really curious about it. I want to. Um, it might be, um, I need to actually mark the endings. That, they're, that I'm not fully in the space because I haven't really forgiven a few people. I haven't really done some amends that I need to do so that I can really occupy this in between space and something new can come through. Like I, I've got a maybe there's some some ritual around endings so that I've really done them well. And once we then begin to find that space, it's game on because Life, Gaia, um, wants to um, then begin to come in and reorganize the pieces and inspire and guide so that even in the middle of incredible limitation and frustration, that guiding force has not left us. As a matter of fact, uh, there's this um, guy named Macharana that says, nothing true is ever born without limitation. You know, in, th in this country, you know, in Western thinking, we don't want to be limited by anything, you know. Um, and that leads to greed and consumption and accumulation. Okay, we can't do that anymore. So there's this different kind of limited container <laughs> mm -hmm. that maybe we give thanks for, um, where we have to go to perceive at this more subtle level because nothing takes that away from us ever. And that's where my interest lies at this particular time. 